Show me your commitment. It's easy. It's with your results. Show me your commitment. It's easily displayed in your results. You can try to dance this any way you like. You show me your results and I'll show you the commitment. You show me your results and I'll show you what you're committed to. Period. This shirt right here with the brand Warrior Greens, committed. I like it. It's a cool shirt. I like it. I just, I kind of like how it rolls. It's nice. I realize it's early right now. I'm in Cancun and uh, we're about to head out on a yacht for the day and have a good time. And here I am in the gym, one of the gyms here by myself. Nobody's here, it's early. My wife will get up here in a little bit, go do her workout, she'll hear her thing. But I find it interesting coming to a place like this because we are surrounded by people who are here on vacation, right? Vacation, vacation is an interesting place because people go on vacation to get away from the regular life because most of them hate their regular life. And so they come on vacation to get away from the regular life because they hate the regular life. And I get it. I used to do the same thing. I hate my fucking life. And so I'm gonna go on vacation to get away from my life. Right, the results of my life back home, quote unquote, are not great. I don't like them. I don't like where my results are. So I'm gonna go on vacation. And typically the pools here at the clubhouse or at this resort are, are like clubs at every resort, which is you have the kids playing in one pool and then you have this other game going on, which is the adults sitting around in the pool and just getting drunk all day, which again, I don't have a problem with at all. I've done it too, I get it. But I find it interesting about this guy, this game of commitment yesterday, story. So there's these water slides here at the park, at the hotel. My little one, she's two and a half years old. She's barely tall enough above the line to be able to go down these slides. Barely tall enough. So she goes up and we go up to the top and we go up to get up and she typically we go down slides like this. I'll go down a slide first or I'll go with her and then just kind of demonstrate how to do it. And then she goes, she's only two and a half years old. She's very aggressive though, she's got a lot of older siblings. We get up there and he says, hey, she's tall enough. And we sit up there and he said, but you're too tall. I was like, what? He said, yeah, you're too tall. I was like, what do you mean I'm too tall? He's like, look at the sign. I was like, oh shit, I didn't even think about looking at the sign about how too tall I am. So I was too tall to go, she was tall enough. So I said, well, we don't have a choice, babe. You wanna go down the slide? She's like, I do. I said, sit down. She's like, daddy, I don't wanna go by myself. I said, well, you're gonna have to go by yourself because I can't go with you. She's like, well, dad, I, I wanna go down the slide, but I want you to come with me. I was like, I can't come with you, babe, girl, and poof, pushed her. Now, she's a great swimmer. She's not like a rod. The little kids around here wearing their floaties at six years of age, still trying to figure out how to do it because they're not around water, the ocean, the pool, etc. We are. We have a huge pool at our house. We're around the ocean every single day. My kids have to learn how to swim. The probability of drowning is extremely high for a little kid if they don't know how to swim. So they start them when they're like six, nine months old in survival swimming. So we push her down the slide. Down the slide she goes. Splash. Hits the water. She's good to go. Swims to the side. Everybody's mesmerized by the fact this little child has just done this. Not me, though. Because I know what was behind the two and a half years with that child. I know what happened when she was nine months old and we started survival swimming. I know what 15 minutes every single day for almost a year and a half looks like for a child. Learning the basics of how to hold your breath, learning the basics of how to float yourself back onto your back, how to get back onto your chest and find the edge. When she was a baby, she was able to do this at just over a year of age. We could throw her in the pool off the side of the deck and she would flip to her back, float by herself, and then just float there. She'd cry, looking for help. Now, she's a champ. She completely crushed it, right? So people look at the result and I was sitting there in the water and I was catching her at the bottom of the slide and we were cheering and clapping and I was doing this for about two hours. You know kids do this. I like to get on the slide and go and go and go. And as the dad comes down the water, because I was playing with his kids too. So his kids were in the water. My kids were in the water. There was a couple other families' kids were in the water. I'm a PE teacher by trade. That's my degree. People say, what well, qualifies you? Launch Wake Up Warrior, DKW Styling, Kingdom Vault, all your insurance companies. Like, how do you do this? What was your credibility, Garrett? Can you give me some credibility? I said, fucking easy, son. I was like, I have a degree in kickball. I'm the highest paid PE teacher in the fucking world. Now, doing my PE teacher thing, I was sitting there in the water with all the kids gathered around. We were clapping and happy and dancing around. People were taking turns coming down the slide. We were throwing these little balls to the kids to each other. And this dad comes down into the water and he said, man, you were down here taking care of my kids and having so much fun. I felt like an absentee father. So I came down to participate too. I said, fantastic. Welcome to the party, my friend. There's plenty of room in the pool. And I sat there and we started talking. He was from Chicago and his kids are here and they're getting in the pool. And he's looking at my daughter and said, how old is your daughter? I said, my daughter's two and a half years old. He's like, man, she's really good at swimming. He's like, you know, some kids just kind of have it natural. I said, there's nothing natural about what my daughter has going on right now. He's like, what do you mean? I was like, there's nothing natural about it. I was like, you're seeing a two and a half year old after 18 months of commitment. She's like, what are you talking about? We've had somebody come to the house, train her 15 minutes every day, Monday through Friday for the past year and a half. 
15 minute lessons, learning the basics, how to take care of herself. So when you see her swim, holding her breath for 10 to 12 seconds under the water, clear over to the stairs, that doesn't just happen. You don't just fall out of a vagina and all of a sudden, because you were born in amniotic fluid, you know all of a sudden how to swim. That's how people can fall in the marina and the harbor where I live and they drown every summer. That's why this summer where I live in Orange County, there'll be at least five or six people that will drown to death. Grown ass human beings will drown to death in the ocean. Why? They don't know how to swim. They don't understand the water. The craziest and saddest part is people that do this in the harbor on paddle boards. They fall off in the harbor where the water is flat behind big, huge barriers and blockage. So there's no wind and no wake. There's nothing. They fall off. They're drunk and they fall in the water and they drown. Well, I was committed to not having this happen. It's tragic. The idea of baby kids and kids every year, kids drowned in swimming pools. So I was like, this is not going to be my kids. We're going to teach her how to take care of herself. You know what the other option was? Build a fence around the pool. But we weren't going to do that. The home we'd moved into, I was like, the home is beautiful. We're not going to build a big ass fence around that. People said, it's not safe. I said, you tell me this. So you're telling me that the strategy that makes the most sense is to build a wall for my daughter to stay away from what could possibly be risky. At the same time, neglecting the idea of actually weaponizing my daughter to care for herself in the conditions that inevitably she will face. Build a wall, keep her out. Or number two, weaponize my two and a half year old to care for herself. You know the kids every day, every year in Orange County across the United States of America that drown in pools where there's gates around the outside. So I pour into my kids for that reason. So yesterday I'm sitting there in the pool. We're doing a slide. The guy from Chicago and I are talking. Nice man. Nice man. Can't remember his name. We're having a great conversation. He's a great man. His kids are great too. Me and Brandon, I remember his kid's name. But we're having a great time. We're playing. And I look at him and I said, that is the result of commitment. Commitment by me as a father. Commitment by my daughter as a person. To learn. Those results are not accidental. Those results don't happen. They don't just show up. Your results don't just show up. Your children learn to swim because you were committed to get them lessons and or teach them themselves. You have a fit body or you don't, and that is your fault, nobody else's. Well, I'm big bones, you're not fucking big bones. Well, I got a condition, everybody's got a condition. It's called being human being and being lazy. That's what it's called. It's called not eating correctly. It's called not working out. It's called not training. It's called treating your life like a vacation. Now, I have nothing against people wanting to party. It's great. I party too. I get it. Do your thing. Have a great time. But at the end of the day, don't be surprised when I come down to the little gym here where all the resorts are, the, the residences are. We're right. There's, there's nobody down here. There's nobody down here. Nobody. Why? Because everybody's out drinking. I was out later with everybody too. Doesn't matter. I come down because commitment isn't something that you just magically find. Commitment is a decision to go no matter what. Go no matter what. Go no matter what. Go no matter what. Your money issues are a commitment issue. Your body issues are a commitment issue. Your spiritual issues are a commitment issue. Your marriage issues are a commitment issue. Your family issues are a commitment issue. Your fear, doubt, worry is a commitment issue. You want to experience the opposite of fear, doubt, and worry? Then you better get committed to doing the things required to get yourself out of fear, doubt, and worry. You want to get out of the place of feeling scarce with money? Then your commitment had better fucking raise. You better change the game. You better raise the standard in how you choose to operate every single day. You want to stop being terrified of the government and terrified of all the mandates and terror? Then you better do something about it for yourself. No one's coming to save you. Do you understand this? There's not some magical pony that's gonna show up with superpowers to save you. It's not gonna happen. For all my Christians who believe in Jesus, who believe that Christ is who he said he was, I appreciate you. I appreciate what you're standing for. And for all those that aren't, I appreciate you too. And here's what I can tell you. You can be saved and still be a slave. Your salvation never guaranteed your liberation in this life. Your liberation is a decision. It's a commitment. God endowed you with dominion to govern your life. That dominion came with a commandment, which was what? Bear fruit. And then Jesus in the New Testament said it really simply. He said, by their fruit, ye shall know them. And this is when my theologians come out and went, well, I was talking about the, spirit of the, the fruit of the spirit. I hear you. Go ahead and keep playing that narrative with your obese diabetic body. 
Go ahead and keep playing that narrative with your sexless marriage. Go ahead and play that narrative with your broke bank accounts. Go ahead and play that narrative with your children that aren't going to listen to you. The minute they get out of the house, they're going to tick-tock their asses away at college and sleep with whoever they want to. There is a divine side and a diabolical side to all of us. And at the end of the day, you have to have a place in which you choose to commit. Well, you know what? You don't have to do shit. I I'm going to take that back. You don't have to do shit. You don't. Just like people don't have to come to the gym this morning. But I'll have you consider one simple thing as I wrap up today. You ready? Your results are a function of your commitment. My daughter's ability to swim at two and a half is a result of her commitment. My daughter's ability to bodyboard in cold ass 52 degree water in a wetsuit is a, is a function of commitment, but it's a function of commitment of my daughter and of myself. So I want you to recognize also that your lack of commitment affects everybody around you. The government doesn't owe you shit. You shouldn't be getting more checks from the government. You're not entitled to hold house, a house. You're not entitled to health care because you were born. You're not entitled to being taken care of because you were born. You were given dominion and given one simple command. Do the work of bearing fruit. So if you stand butt ass naked in front of the mirror today and you're not happy with what you see, don't worry. That's a function of your commitment. And the good news is you can change that. You look at your bank account, pull it up on your app today. You don't like what you see. Don't worry. That's your fruit. That's a function of your commitment. And you can change that. You wake up and you're in a relationship that sucks ass and you hate being in this relationship. Guess what? Don't worry. That's your fruit. And that's a function of your commitment. You can change that. You don't like the dynamics of your family and how it's operating. Good news. That fruit, it's a reality check. It's a nut kick. It's a titty slap and a punch in the face and a kick in the throat. And guess what? It's your fault. Nobody else is. Nobody else is to blame but you. It's not the government. It's not your wife. It's not your children. It's not your parents. It's not Joe Biden. It's not Trump. It's not the vaccine. It's not fucking COVID. It's none of it. All of this shit is bullshit. It's not your pastor. It's not God. Nobody's cursing you. You are cursing you with your lack of what? Let me show you on a t-shirt. Commitment. So level your fucking commitment up and change your situation or don't level your commitment up and just be a lazy fuck that thinks everybody owes you something. Either way, I can tell you this, you're still going to have to be accountable for your fruit and nobody's coming to save you. You can be saved and still be a slave. So my final question for you, where in your world across body being balanced in business, do you know for certain, my friend, that it is time for you to level up your commitment because the fruit that you see is not inspiring to you. Second question along with this, what can you do today to level that commitment up in a big way to start changing it? You don't have to change it all today. Just pick something. What can you fucking do? One thing today to start moving forward. My friends, I'm out of here. I'm off to go gather up my chitlins and head to the boat for the day. See if we could do some shenanigans on the boat. Watch my wife surprise and attack everybody like she always does. And out of nowhere, she'll be laying out tanning. And then she'll climb up to the top. This woman that's birthed four beautiful daughters of mine. And do a big-ass backflip arching off the second deck. And everyone's like, what the fuck? Wasn't expecting that. I was like, I know. There's a lot you're not expecting from that spicy woman. All right, my friends. I'm out. Scared Jay White. Sign off. 10, 11, like, good morning, good afternoon.